and welcome. Uh, nice to have you with us on a Monday afternoon. Hi, everybody. Yours truly, Christopher Russo, as we kick off a broadcast week here on Mad Dog Unleashed on the great Sirius XM 82. Nice to have you aboard as we uh, babble away. Ray Martell in. More news on him as the afternoon moves along today. Eddie Erickson here as well. Ray's getting over the Patriot loss, but he's been boosted up, and we'll get to that. Uh, 888 Mad Dog 6 is your two-way uh, sports talk telephone number. Howie Rose, Ray, uh, as we uh, babble away about what's going on as far as the world of competition is concerned. Do a little NBA later on with the South. Too many Celtics retired. My goodness. I'll read you the numbers in a little while. You'll be flabbergasted. We'll take a look at that. We'll do a little uh, Cavaliers here today, too. You Darvish uh, will spend some time on. Eddie Erickson and I will get plenty of spots on. And yes, Jim Bell will wake up in time uh, to do the 505 spot. Jim was supposed to join us on Friday, and Eddie couldn't find him, but I tracked him down uh, on numbers, you know, really uh, about 6 o'clock. I'm waiting for your phone call, Chris. Where have you been? Eddie forgot but I'll get him on here uh, today at uh, 5 o'clock. And I tell you, Jim's going to be in a happy mood, and we're going to start there. I'm going to tell you why I can't get into it, but uh, if you look at the ratings so far for the Olympics, I mean, my goodness, there's a lot more bigger Olympic fans. Who in America on Friday night, take your wife out to dinner or something. I mean, who in America on Friday night wants to um, watch tape delayed by a... 12 hours, the opening ceremonies. Now, it didn't do well as it had done in Sochi, but 23 million people watched that. Now, I mean, that is ridiculous. How, who in America? I don't know one person who sat in front of a television set on Friday night uh, watching the Olympics uh, on the opening ceremonies on a 12-hour delay. Now, listen, NBC is a huge network. They can put high heat on there. They're going to get 2 or 3 million people watching it because people just join the networks. And so part of it is the fact that it's, you know, it's on network television. And it's, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's, that's a huge deal. But, I mean, 23 and a half million to watch that, uh, that's mind-boggling. And then, of course, on Saturday night, uh, I don't have yesterday yet, and it probably did well because of the ice skating. But on Saturday night, the prime time on NBC did about 21 and a half million subs- uh, viewers. Less than that had done a couple of years ago uh, from Sochi, which did 25 million. Uh, but still, if you increase that number with all the cable outlets, it's about 24 million people watching the Olympics. And I'm telling you right now, God bless you if you're doing that. I, 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 I don't know what the, I tried. I'm going to get into it now. I tried all weekend. I, I, I flipped around. I did it here. I did it there. I actually tried to find something on other channels on all those NBC uh, owned and operated. I, I just I, I couldn't get into it. I mean, for whatever the reason, I just had a lot of trouble latching on. And, and you know, I must be in a minority because uh, I was dying here to get a bad rating so I can have some fun at NBC expense today, but, you know, when you're getting 20 million, 25 million, 22 million, they dominated the Saturday primetime lineup. I mean, and listen, as they should. I'm sure ABC, CBS, and Fox had a very poor fare on Saturday night. But on uh, TV on Saturday, now they should get a high rating for the money they spent. I mean, but still, uh, ABC, CBS, and Fox on Saturday night had a combined, those three, combined, six million watch. And NBC at 24, 25 million. Well, I mean, that's, listen, I mean, that's pretty darn impressive. I mean, uh, and again, I have had a lot of trouble. Uh, I, do, I would not put on the opening ceremonies if it was in my backyard. I would have drawn the blinds. I'm not sitting there watching that. Uh, Saturday, I try to watch a little bit in the daytime. I try to watch a little at night. Sunday, uh, I didn't watch in the daytime, but I did try to get involved at night. I actually made a conscious effort. I said, you know what? I'm going to, I hit tennis balls late yesterday afternoon, which I never do on a late Saturday uh, but I, I came home. I said, you know, I know Homeland began, but I'm a season behind. I can't go there. I'm still working on Breaking Bad. I'm on fourth season with that. So from that perspective, I know that's five years old, but I'm in. Uh, I you know, better late than never, right? Uh, so what I did last night, as I sat there, I put it on at seven o'clock. I tried to stick with NBC, and I just had a lot of trouble finding it and getting into it and developing a story. And here's the first thing I thought about with the Winter Olympics. The problem that you have is you can't parachute in. 
with these with these particular um, uh, events. You know, NBA, you can parachute in the fourth quarter. You can watch the last 10 minutes. You get a feel of the game. You know, obviously, football, second half, you get a feel of the game. Baseball, seventh inning, you can watch the last two innings, you get a feel of the game. Hockey, you can watch the third period, you get a feel of the game. Tennis, you can pick up, not all the time, but in tennis, because it might be a quick match and everything, but tennis, you can pick it up midstream, and if it's a competitive match, you get a feel of the, you'll get a feel of the, of, of, of the event. Yeah, how in the world can you get do that in the Olympics? First off, you don't know the you don't know the participants. Secondly, you don't know the rules. I mean, what jump it is, you know, what program counts more, how many runs they get by, uh, you know, d- you know, down the ice uh, if it, for the luge, for instance. I'm not exactly, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know the participants. I don't know what is a good rent, what is a good run, what is not a good run. And I, I major, major trouble getting involved. And I'll tell you right now, I don't want to have to go search a, my TV to find out where all the channels are, which I forget, and B, my cable guide to figure out what is being shown at what time and in what place. You know, I, I have a lot of tr- lot of trouble with that. So hold on now. Chris, 9 o'clock, go here, and I can see this. 10.20, go here, and I can see that. Oh, by the way, run down to MSNBC at midnight, and I can see this. I have a lot of tr- I, I just have a lot of trouble, a lot of trouble getting into that, and, and I'm not going to do that on a day in day out basis to watch Olympic games and you know women's speed skating or you know men's luge or men's moguls, uh, you know, and I'm not or pair dancing or whatever that is. There's not a chance in America am I doing that. I mean that's just all there is to it. So. I tried. Uh, I'll probably get back to it, maybe, and I'll see if I can find a way to latch on. But a very, very, very difficult for me all weekend long with these Olympics. Um, and again, you unfortunately because you don't know the events that well, and you know in the Olympic thing with all the meets they have and the runs they have and everything else, you know if you pick it up midstream, you get a little lost because you don't know what happened in the first run, the second run. They combine the runs. They do this. They do that. Best one out of the two. I mean, the short program, long program, it's very, very, very difficult to let you. You really got to be an Olympic lover. You really do. Now, everybody tells me the kids are into it. Now, I had a lot of people tell me this weekend that they watched it because their kids, uh, well, they at least had it on because their 15 year old kid got into it. And the 15 year old kid does not get wrapped up on time zones and everything else. I'll tell you what was weird last night. I put it on at 7 o'clock and it's nighttime in Korea when they're doing the uh, luge. We haven't won a medal. I'm sure you heard the story. I can't get that wrapped up in it, but it's nighttime. Now, I know that this is not live. If it's nighttime here, it can't be nighttime there. So I know it's not live. So I know right out of the gate, even though I didn't know who won, I know right out of the gate that what I'm watching is on a long delay. So then I tell myself, okay, uh, I, I'm not that into the event to begin with. I'm almost watching this more out of obligation than because I really want to watch it and there's nothing else on. You know, Sacramento, Minnesota, I'm trying to get to 27 and a half. I'm not going to get there that for a little while, maybe, with my buddy Grant. But, I mean, the bottom line is, how am I going to sit there and watch this when, A, I don't know how many runs they get, and I picked it up in midstream, there's a million commercials, and then, B, it's on a 12, 13-hour delay, which, you know what, not only makes it difficult, but because, but you also know in that situation that NBC is going to take the breaks at times and they want to take the breaks. They make it more of a TV show than a sporting event. You know, it would be like taping an NFL football game and, you know, and it's a 12-hour tape and they show it to Korea and NBC has got the rights, the worldwide, worldwide rights. And so the Brady game with, uh, with, um, uh, with uh, the Eagles last week, they take a four-minute commercial break on second down because they can do that because it's taped. So in other words, we're in the middle of a series and we take a four-minute break. It's like, you know, the guy's halfway down the, uh, down, down the run and we take a break. It's, it's, very pro, it's very formatted. And that, to me, takes away some of the fun of the sporting aspect of it. And because, you know, sport, it's supposed to be spontaneous. And you know this is not spontaneous. And I know it's on all over the place. Uh, NBC Sportsnet, if I want to see Al Troutwick break down the biathlon, and I, I, I can find it. But I, I, do I really want to look at my guide and figure out what to watch, when to watch? 
watch and everything else. Now, for instance, they do give you a little update in the papers uh, every day of what is on and what isn't on. Remember, none of the papers, the local papers outside of the New York Times, which basically can't get enough of this nonsense, none of the newspapers send anybody there. All right, nobody, New York Post, New York Daily News, uh, USA sends a couple, but I'm talking about the local paper. I bet you the Boston Globe doesn't have anybody there. Even the Globe, and they love the Olympics, and they might have somebody, but you get the idea. They, they never, it's, they're not going to do it. It's too much, it's, it's, it's too expensive, uh, the deadlines are atrocious, and, uh, you know, and not enough people, the sports fan cares enough. Now, today... For instance, if you wanted to watch this, at 5.10 this morning, you could have watched the Women's Luge, the singles competition, the first run. It was live at 5.10 a.m. Now, I'm not getting up at 5.10 a.m. If I'm up at 5.10 a.m., it's not going to be watching the Women's Luge live on NBC Sportsnet. All right, that was on at five. And then later on, I had the women's biathlon. That was a gold medal final live at 5.15. They had women's ice hockey at 7.10. This is all on NBC Sportsnet. They had men's freestyle skiing, moguls gold medal final. That was not live. That was later on in the morning. Now, tonight, they have three to five. Uh, so I guess if you put on, matter of fact, uh, Ray, uh, you can see my guys don't even know. Put on the NBC right now because they've got live programming. Uh, they don't live programming, but it's on. It's 5 a.m. In, in, in Korea. But uh, obviously, Eddie doesn't know. He's fooling around with his uh, expense sheet from, uh, uh, from from the Super Bowl. NBC, if you could, Eddie, and, and NBC's on. So NBC right now has got men's free, freestyle skiing, uh, moguls gold medal final, which is taped. They have women's ski jumping, and they got women's luge. So if you want to watch it right now, 3 to 5, you're watching it in about a nine-hour delay. So if you wanted to go home right now and you wanted to see the women ski jumping, people that you've never heard of, ski jump in a place that you would never visit, you go watch it on a nine-hour delay. Now, I'm not doing that. That's me. I mean, if it, uh, you put it right in front of me and, you know, I can't miss it, I'll make sure. But I don't know, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And then the night, now tonight's live because it's 8 to 11.30. Because then that's two. And that's another thing with the athletes. They're making the athletes basically start their competition at 8 a.m. So it fits the TV window in America. But that's what they make them all do. I mean, so you got to live with that. Every athlete's got to deal with adjustments of when to prepare himself for an event based on the TV schedule. Anyway, tonight... Uh, it's men's alpine skiing. That's live. Women's snowboarding. No, thank you. That's the half pipe gold medal final. Uh, it's the X Games at the Olympics I can't take. And then women's speed skating, the 1500 meter gold medal final. That's Ted Robinson. Ted's out of tennis, so they stick him at the ice rink. Uh, and that's all live today, 8 to 11.30. Now, will I watch that? It's not skating. And you couldn't put it on last night without seeing that skating. Triple accesses and triple jumps and all that nonsense. Tara Lipinski breaking it down. Uh, that I can't watch. I'm sorry. With Terry Gannon. Wishing that he was uh, back with uh, Jim Valvano at NC State. That I, can't, that I can't deal with. I'm sorry. So right now, I've tried, folks. I've tried. I tried to be your diligent sports talk show host, uh, and I would continue to make an effort, and maybe I'll find something here that I can dig my teeth into. The key is is to find an event that you like, you get to that, and then maybe something else hits. That's the key. Will I find it here between now and a week from Sunday? Well, I won't, but based on the numbers, you will. 17 after the hour, we continue. Mad Dog Unleashed.